Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us. Uh, again, my name is Rick Lowe. You can see it here on the screen in Philadelphia. Uh, feel free to take down my email there, rhlowe at duanemorris.com. Uh, I uh, have a about a 10-page paper that I recently wrote that covers the legal issues that we're going to be I'm going to be talking about today. So if you'd like a copy of it, just uh, feel free to uh, email me, and I'll be glad to send it back to you. As you can see here, the, the title of this uh, presentation is The Only Thing to Fear is Fear Itself. And obviously, uh, that slogan is timely in some ways uh, as it harkens back uh, to uh, the Depression and all the issues we have to deal with right now. But the, I, I thought it also was very helpful in order to help synthesize the general uh, thought that I want to get across today, which is that the legal risks in BIM are manageable. There may be other kind of risk uh, that uh, people complain about as any new technology and approach uh, goes from being uh, new to uh, being more thoroughly um, used uh, in the industry. But there is no reason in my book to believe that the legal risks involved in using BIM are a reason not to uh, go ahead with a BIM project. Um, as Holly said, uh, I uh, ran, led the national effort from the consensus docs, and, uh, uh, which is a group of more than 20 different organizations. I'll get into that a little more later. Uh, and we put together the first legal document dealing with BIM uh, anywhere, le le first form document, uh, and had a lot of different people involved. Um, so I think I can say with a great deal of confidence that you really do not have to be concerned that the legal risks in BIM are any worse than in 2D. Um, and bear in mind that uh, um, what I'm saying, is, I'm talking in relative terms. I'm not trying to say there are no legal risks. What I'm trying to say is that they're manageable, and the only thing you can compare them to that matters is life in the 2D world. Uh, and in that world, there is plenty of risk, plenty of legal risk. I'm sending one of my daughters to college and hope to send the next one to college, and it's in part because of problems that arise in the 2D world. And I expect there are going to be fewer lawyers able to send their kids to college uh, in a 3D world than in a 2D world. Uh, so let me get into that a bit. Uh, you can see here uh, that uh, uh, the one of, what I want to show you next is a um, uh, uh, is a of this is a picture of a um, 2D detail, steel detail. You can see how all the bracing comes in the middle. Uh, if you're a, uh, a structural engineer, uh, perhaps this is not too difficult to imagine what's going on. But for the rest of us, it's quite confusing. Compare that to uh, the next uh, slide, which is, if I can get her going here, uh, a model of the same thing. Compare that to the actual. And you can see that's the as built. You can see just how powerful this is. You go from a 2D representation to uh, a picture of a 3D. You can see the detail in the connections down to the bolts. You can get as detailed as you like. I like to start with this because the whole idea of legal risk comes, evolves from the notion of whether or not things are clear or unclear. How can you argue that going from this to this makes it more unclear? It has to make it more clear, and that being the case, you have to start from the premise that if you can get to 3D, things are going to be better, so you can build complicated structures like this and everybody can understand what they're talking about. So um, here we are. Uh, I just wanted to show this slide 
which is a uh, uh, part of a, a model of a process plant. And I don't know how many, what the uh, uh, experience level is of the people on, the, on this call uh, with regard to BIM, but I just thought for those who are not that familiar with it, slide shows you just how much detail you can, um, you can gather up in a slide, in a BIM uh, model. And you'll see on the right here on properties uh, that it says uh, when you click on one particular part of the model, it tells you that it's a pipe, it's 18 inches. Uh, it tells you what line it is, weight and length. Just can give you a great deal of information. And obviously, a BIM model gives you uh, dimensions in 3D, three dimensions, X, Y, and Z coordinates, not simply X and Y. So that's all the more reason why there should be less ambiguity and more specificity, which uh, should go to the issue of um, legal risk and how it's more manageable. Uh, the, uh, here are some myths that I'd like to dispel uh, that we had to deal with as part of the um, AGC BIM forum. Uh, and let me go through these. First, uh, the uh, question is that you can't use BIM if you don't have non-traditional collaboration on a project. Uh, the answer is, uh, the truth is that that's not the case. And that even if you use, uh, you can even use BIM on a very simple uh, GMP job or a lump sum job, it can be on some government jobs, uh, the Army Corps of Engineers, uh, the GSA, both are pushing hard for the use of BIM. Uh, a lot of private owners are starting to call for BIM. Uh, you do not have to engage in integrated project delivery, IPD, or collaboration in order to use BIM. They're separate, and it's better if you keep them separate in your mind. Uh, another myth that is simply not true, one party can change another party's model. People are concerned, well, if everybody puts everything into one model, can't, some, can't the fabricator go in, the steel fabricator, and change what the, um, what the, what the structural engineer did with, this, with the members, and therefore um, perhaps uh, damage the structural integrity, diminish the structural integrity of the entire uh, building? That's not the case, and I'll show you some slides that show you how, how that works. Uh, but you certainly can set up procedures so that one person cannot change another party's model. Next one, you can't tell who's responsible for what. A lot of people say that it blurs the distinction. The use of BIM blurs the distinction between uh, archi uh, the architect and the contractor. What it really does, in my opinion, is reveal uh, whether or not there's a blurring. And it re reveals where the design stops and the uh, contractor, uh, the, the construction begins. Uh, so if anything, it's illuminating. Uh, same idea here, blurs the distinction between design and construction. The architect is not in responsible charge of design. You see that responsible charge uh, is in uh, parentheses. Um, many statutes around the country um, say, uh, architectural licensing statutes, say that an architect has to be in responsible charge, that's a defined term, uh, of a project. And the reason for that is very serious namely uh, for maintaining public safety, somebody has to be in charge of a, a project to make sure that the structure being built will stand up uh, and that uh, uh, it'll be safe. Uh, so the question is whether BIM uh, somehow invades the architect's space there, uh, and the answer is no, and we'll get into that. 